Hi guys, welcome to M-Factor. In the previous video, we have looked upon the salivary glands and its type. Next, let's discuss about the structure and duct system of the salivary gland. The salivary gland is internally divided into lobules. Within each lobule, many acne or alveoli are present. Each of those consists of a single layer of cuboidal epithelial cells surrounding the lumen or the central opening where the saliva is deposited after it's being produced by those secretory cells. These secretions are drained into the lumen of the intercalated duct. Many of them join to form the intralobular duct. Few of those intralobular ducts join to form the interlobular duct which unite further to form the main duct of the gland. So from the lumen, it goes into the intercalated, then to the intralobular, and then to the interlobular, and then to the main duct of the gland. A gland with such a type of structure and duct system is called as racemose type. Next, let's look at the properties of saliva. In a day, a normal human secretes about 1 to 1.5 liter per day, or 1 milliliter per minute. Even though parotid gland is the largest gland, it contributes only 25% of the total, while the sublingual, submandibular gland contributes the most, 70%. Sublingual gland being the smallest contributes only 5%. The saliva is slightly acidic and hypotonic to plasma. Talking about the composition of saliva, it consists of 99.5% water and 0.5% solid. The solid part comprises of the organic inorganic and gaseous substances also. Function of saliva Saliva helps in the preparation of food for saliva. Saliva acts as a lubricant. It lubricates the mucous membrane of the mouth and the food we intake. It facilitates chewing and every movement of the tongue. The moistened and masticated food is being rolled into the bolus and further it is swallowed. The lubrication of the bolus is also done by the mucin of saliva. Appreciation of taste Taste is a chemical sensation. The saliva, by its solvent action, dissolves the solute or the food. The dissolved food stimulates the taste buds. Next is the digestive function of the saliva. Saliva has three enzymes, salivary amylase, maltase and lingual lipase. Salivary amylase is Amylytic, that is, it digests the carbohydrates. It converts starch into dextrin and maltose. It's being secreted by all the glands. Next is the maltase that converts maltose into glucose. It's only secreted by the major salivary glands. The lingual lipase is lipolytic, that is, lipid digesting. It converts the triglycerides into fatty acids and Diacylglycerols is being secreted by the lingual glands. Next is the cleansing and protective function of saliva. Continuous and constant rinsing of the mouth with saliva prevent bacterial growth and it removes the materials that serve as culture medium for the bacteria. It also has enzyme lysozyme that kills some of the bacteria. Proline rich proteins helps in the neutralization of toxic substances such as tannins that is present in the food we eat. Proline rich protein and lactoferrin are antimicrobial and stimulate enamel formation. Saliva also has immunoglobin IgA which is antiviral and antibacterial in function. Saliva also has a role in speech. Its lubricative action helps in the easy movement of the tongue and other parts which makes the pronunciation easier. Saliva also has excretory function. Saliva secretes inorganic and organic substances and viruses too in some cases. The viruses that cause rabies and mumps are secreted by the saliva. This excretory property also helps in diagnosing some of the pathological conditions. For example, presence of glucose in saliva indicates diabetes mellitus or the excess amount of urea indicates nephritis. Excess amount of calcium indicates hyperparathyroidism. Saliva also helps in the regulation of body temperature in the case of animals. 
we can see dogs dripping saliva in the summer seasons and it also helps in the regulation of water balance when our water content in our body is low uh, our mouth gets dried up and we feel thirsty and we drink water and the water content water amount is restored thus it also helps in the water balance next let's discuss about the regulation of the salivary secretions salivary secretion is being regulated by the autonomic nervous system that is by the both parasympathetic and sympathetic tissues of the autonomic nervous system let's look at the parasympathetic fibers in the case of parasympathetic fibers, we have got two different mechanisms for the sublingual and submandibular glands and the other one for the parotid gland. The parasympathetic preganglionic fibers arises from the superior salivatory nucleus situated in the inferior portion of the bones. It then passes through the nerves intermediaries of Risberg, then to the geniculate ganglion and through the motor fibers and cora tympani of the facial nerve lingual branches of the trigeminal nerve and then it finally reaches the submaxillary ganglion. The postganglionic fibers arises from the submaxillary ganglion and then supply to the submaxillary and the sublingual glands. For the parotid gland, the parasympathetic preganglionic fibers arises from the inferior salivatory nucleus situated in the upper portion of the medulla oblongata. From here, it passes through the tympanic branch of the glossopharyngeal nerve tympanic plexus and lesser petrosal nerve and end in the otic ganglion. From the otic ganglion, the postganglionic fibers arises and it then passes through the auricular temporal branch and supply the parotid glands. The function of the parasympathetic nervous system is to stimulate the salivary glands, but with a large quantity of water, that is, the organic current will be too low. It's because the activated acinar cells causes vasodilation. Next, let's look at the sympathetic fibers. The preganglionic fibers arises from the lateral holes of the spinal cord of first and second thoracic segments of the spinal cord and they end up in the superior cervical ganglion. From this ganglion, the postganglionic fibers arises and supplies to the salivary glands for three of them, parotid, sublingual and submaxillary glands. The function of the sympathetic nervous system is to stimulate the secretion of the salivary gland but will be thick and rich in organic constituents such as mucus. It's because the activated acinar cells causes vasoconstriction. Saliva secretion is also regulated by the nervous system through reflex action. Reflex may be of two types unconditioned and conditioned. Unconditioned reflex is inbound reflex. It's always within us and it does not need any previous experiences. Example of it is the secretion of saliva while food is present in our mouth. Coming to the conditioned reflex, it's acquired reflex. It's it's being acquired by us from the previous experiences we had. Example of it is the secretion of saliva from the sight, smell, hearing and thought of food.